Thank you very much. Welcome back. And uh, a lot more of your messages, if you send them to our WhatsApp line, 0202166633. Bella will be sharing them with you across uh, uh, the show. But let's get into our paper review segment this morning. The Daily Graphic, Small Arms Commission to uh, Assign Codes to Firearms. High Court Dismisses Bank of Ghana's Application Against Unicredit. Uh, waiting to Die, 180 on Death Row, No Executions Since 1993. The Finder newspaper, tomorrow's MPP parliamentary primaries in orphan constituencies, 100 slots up for grabs. And Dr. Baumia directs public institutions to purchase all toilet rolls from local manufacturers. Some men threaten wives with divorce over family planning. And Coco Board receives international Coco in inspection accreditation. The Ghanaian Times, big boost for youth employment as government launches four initiatives. Information Ministry to hold Fit Town Hall meeting in Bolga. Family planning not preserve of couples and police deploy 2,000 personnel for MPP primaries. The BNFT this morning. Aquaba Airlines should be operational soon. That's the promise we're hearing from Mr. Kofiada, who is the Minister for Aviation. Only 1% of informal sector workers contribute to pension as MPRA warns of more misery in old age. Telecom sector is now the new economic powerhouse as it grew by 52% in quarter two. Finally, the Daily Guide. Kaswa cops killers freed Eric Kojodia caged. Government frowns on quack security experts. We're with you, Buhari assures Ghana. And the two force chief killer remanded. Court throws out Namwan 39 million US dollar case in Dubai. My guest this morning is lawyer Duji Tamaklo. He speaks for the NDC. We're here to receive a member of the MPP's communication team. I'm checking the time is 7.30. Duji, welcome. Thank you for your time. Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm, reading, you, I'm reading somewhere that um, the cleanup of the banking sector, and we'll just have a preliminary mm. conversation on this one, um, it, it has a lot to do with the reduction in the benchmark values and how it's affecting uh, exports and imports. Really, have you heard this as well? Yes, yes. Uh, what yes, have you been um, hearing? Yes, good morning uh, to yourself, uh, cherished viewers. And uh, let me read um, a story that is in a uh, graphic mm. online. Mm. And it makes very interesting... Um, Reading. And I have always maintained that the key managers of our economy took a very linear, a very short-sighted, anti-Ghana agenda in this whole business of cleaning up the banking sector. Now, beyond the fact that this so-called cleanup of the banking sector has resulted in what you call the destruction of capital formation by Ghanaians, what it has also done <laughs> is that it's beginning to expose a bigger issue. Look, graphic business has this. Reduction in benchmark mm. values fails to lift imports. Now, it says mm. that the president of Guta, one mm -hmm. um, Joseph, uh, let me just get the name right so mm. that I don't mispronounce uh, mm. someone's name, um, this Guta, Guta's yes, position. Yes. Okay. And so Dr. Joseph Obin, <coughs> now this is what he says about one of our members, Dr. Obin indicated that most of the importers mm. currently had their working capital locked up in some of the financial institutions mm. that collapsed through the financial sector cleanup. Mm. One of our members deposited money in a savings and loan company on Friday. The mm -hmm. following Monday, when the person was going for the money, mm -hmm. he was told that the self-financial company has collapsed. Mm. And he does make the point that, mm. you know these our brothers and sisters in Okainshi mm -hmm. and others, mm -hmm. they have very small capital kind of. Right. And so they depend so much on those financial intermediary companies. I mean, the savings and, and loans, loans. microfinance mm -hmm. companies and what have you. And so they, they so much depend on it that mm -hmm. any decision that you take, 
will destroy them. Mm -hmm. Now remember that all these microfinance or savings and loan, mm -hmm. one way or the other, have their parent companies mm -hmm. or related partners as the banks that were collapsed. Okay. And so the Bank of Ghana did not do a proper, what you call a dynamic analysis of the impact the, the, of the, the finance minister and the vice president say, look, if we hadn't done it, would have seen a much bigger problem. And, and why, our, why do you disagree and, 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 with no, that? I, I will tell you. For instance, you pick mm. a bank that, for instance, needed 800 mm. million Ghana cities to be on its feet, right? Mm. Then you say you want to collapse it. And then after the collapse, you come around and tell us that you have expended 2 billion Ghana cities in solving 800 million Ghana CD problem. Are you a wise person? Are you wise? Government of Ghana is telling us that they have expended in all of this cleanup mm. close to 12 billion, and the figures keep changing, right? Now, if you are telling me that you have expended 12 billion in cleaning up a mess, that is less that value. Are you a wise and prudent user of the taxpayers' well, you, money? you clean up the mess and you fix what is no, uh, what is no, what is missing. All these fixed. banks needed mm. in some of the cases is to beef up their capital. Look, a classic example, which I always want to use, Heritage Bank. The, the Republic of Ghana is in court. And remember mm. that the decision to prosecute is for the Republic, the executive arm. Mm. Now, you decide to prosecute someone in court. Whilst in court prosecuting the person, mm -hmm. you use the basis of that prosecution as one of the grounds to revoke the person's banking license. So if the tomorrow the person says that this whole idea of prosecuting me mm. is to get a grounds to revoke my license, what would you say? Was there legal basis for No! <clears throat> no. Await the outcome of the judicial process. If the outcome of the judicial process confirms, remember that when you are in court prosecuting, mm. what you go to court with is a bundle of suspicion mm. to be proven in court. You are in court proving your case against the person. Then you use the basis of the prosecution to say that makes the person not fit and proper mm. as a shareholder of a bank. And on that basis, proceed to revoke the person's banking license. What you had forgotten is that such a person may have also related companies mm. that employ other people. So by taking the oxygen from that company called maybe Heritage Bank, the effect is that you'll be destroying other companies in that chain. The people managing our economy today took a more myopic, anti-Ghana strategy. Are you not being too hard? No. Too look, hard see, with look, your choice look, of words. Look, you, see, you see, Hughes, growing mm. up, we were told how under military regimes, mm. people mm. lost businesses and what have you. Mm. So all of us agreed to form a National Reconciliation Commission. Mm. You recall? Mm. Then we all went to there and said, look, we have wronged each other. Right. So let's reconcile. We did that. Mm. It's because any time you decide to use regulation, mm -hmm. so-called rule of law, to destroy legitimate businesses of people, mm. what you are doing is that you are destroying <coughs> the country. Let me give you a classic example. Wrap up for me yes, so we can switch. I have mm. listened to Aliko Dangote mm. of Nigeria. Make the point that, listen, whatever he is today is because of a deliberate strategy by Obasanjo. What did he do? Block massive importation by Nigerians. And so Dangote got the opportunity to now produce the very thing that they were bringing into the country. Mm -hmm. Look, a classic case, salt. Look at the amount of salt Nigerians bring for their petrochemical industry from Brazil only. Mm. Look at Adan Songo. Mm. The amount of salt we have from Keta right to Adan. We have so much salt, but what are we doing? So if tomorrow you have a business person, and I always say entrepreneurs go through a lot in mm. putting everything together. Also the Ghanaian attitude of even paying loans. Mm. It's a big problem. So when people are managing financial sector, abroad, the U.S. and what have you, the state always has a role to play to ensure that 
indigenous capital formation is always encouraged. Do you know that eventually we are having a situation here in Ghana, mm. okay, where the bulk of the owners of capital are not Ghanaians. It has even security, impl national security implications, even for the country. But, but the government says, look, we're, we're, we're working at it, take time, but the interest rates are coming down, see, the lending see, rates see, are coming see, down. See, you see, you see, the government is doing something, look, is it No, not? no, no, please. Get to the market and do market survey. But, but the interest rates have dropped. You see, let me the tell lending you, rates someone will go out there and say interest rates have fallen and what happened. Go out there and, and ask people. Notwithstanding the fact that interest rate had fallen, what is their urge to go for capital? There is none. Look, Unilever, mm. Unilever, they have issued a statement explaining why their revenues had fallen. Let me, let me announce for your information, uh, viewers, that we're expecting the MPP representative is yet to appear. If it does appear, we have a chair for him to also uh, join the conversation and be part of it. But we invite you to send your comments to WhatsApp 02021 66633. Also live on Twitter and on Facebook. Share your thoughts, comments, and questions if you have any. And we'll See, gladly plan it. Let, Unilever, let's look at the Unilever, Unilever is, No, quickly. Unilever issues revenue what, what, what are you saying? And it says that the economic climate in Ghana has seen a slowdown, mm. especially in trading <clears throat> conditions. Mm particularly after the banking sector reformed, which began <laughs> in 2018. Mm. And they attribute other reasons. Mm. Look, all these distributors in the chain, say Unilever products, mm. they go, mm. the people who run small, small shops around our mm. communities, mm. some of them <coughs> go to this microfinance company for money, mm. for trading purposes. Mm. Now, when you collapse a bank, without thinking of the implication. Because personally you have an agenda okay. against individual. Mm. The effect is that you will take a political decision that mm. the ripple effect will be so huge that at the end of the day, the effect to Ghanaian. I'm sure the Bank of Ghana never anticipated mm. that by going on this route of closing or revoking banking license, in any case, this whole agenda of banking, do you know it was not evenly applied? Do, do, you, know, do you also know that the, the basis for shutting them down were right, that allegations of people, that you know, of finance, you know, people you know, had you falsified see, documents, no, people had, no, 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 they had not see, gotten in, their, in, their requisite in, capacity in, 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 in to be able to run these, banks. Look, in some of these transactions, which I'm fully aware, okay, mm. the economic and organized crime units were involved to investigate these directors and shareholders. Since 2017 August, the senior minister says Yoko hold itself is losing on. his flavor no, hold on. to investigate corruption. Hold on. Yoko, mm. an agency, remember that the board of Yoko is chaired by a retired justice of the Supreme Court, mm. his lordship justice Alan Brobe. This is not a man, senior minister can just go and say Yoko is losing whatever it is. It's a credible institution, chaired by a retired justice of the Supreme Court. In any case, the executive director of Yoko was appointed by the president, mm. right? And so if Yoko mm. is not working, what do you do? You dissolve the board or you sack the CEO. You do not turn around and blame Yoko. I am saying that some of the fact government put to support this so-called revocation mm. of banking line, it is turned out <laughs> to be false. Hmm. Why? If you, Yoko had investigated this director since August 2017, hmm. today is September 2019, how long does it take to find evidence of stealing? How long does it take to find evidence of recklessness or negligence on the part of these directors so that you could have proceeded to prosecute them? Hmm. If you, you actually legitimately believe in the claim that you made, in any case, this banking sector Are you reform. doubtful of the government? I mean, this government... Are you doubtful of the government? This government has Are you doubtful of the government? No, I'm coming. This mm. government has demonstrated well enough mm. that they do not have the capacity to be credit worthy. And so where okay. we have a situation where mm. the government says one thing mm -hmm. and then the evidence turns out to be the other. And so they are forced to even prosecute you even when they know they have no evidence just because they had put a certain narrative 
And so they must find evidence to support that particular narrative. Okay. Do you know that the banking sector reform mm -hmm. was not applied evenly? How so? Good. You come out and say companies were insolvent or banks did not have the, 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 the needed mm -hmm. solvency, mm -hmm. right? And so on that basis, you proceeded to revoke their licenses. Okay. Heritage Bank was solvent, but you still revoked their license. There are banks that never met the minimum capital requirement, but they are still in existence. So, so the, the, because the, these persons there's have not, association with persons so there's, in the, government. There's, there's just not one uh, element that was looked at beyond no, the that solvency. Is, no, that is why beyond I'm saying, the inability that is why, to no, meet the capital requirement. Saying that. There were also even, other ingredients. No, that is why I'm there. saying that. Even the grounds on which those matters, if you begin to interrogate them one after the other, you will notice that this whole business of banking sector reform was a ruse to legitimately destroy indigenous capital formation. And okay. I'm disappointed this Thank morning. you. Thank you very much. And uh, join us with your thoughts and comments. We're still expecting the MPP representative this morning to join us on the conversation. We usually have two, uh, one from the NDC side, one from the MPP side. We get uh, deeper into the newspapers and, and interact with each other and find out uh, what solutions we can uh, profess with some of our national issues. But well, today we have just uh, an NDC person in the studio. We're still hoping that the MPP person will join us. It's some uh, 27 minutes after 7. Okay. And the, on the front page of the Daily Graphic, I read a story that says 180 on death row, no execution since 1993. And the, the thing is that no president uh, has been willing to sign the death warrant of uh, any, any of these persons who are sentenced to death by uh, hanging. Um, a total of 174 men and six women uh, are, are this number. But I'm looking on the other side, mm -hmm. not just the refusal to sign a death warrant. I'm looking at the emotional torture that these persons could be going through where they, you are told that, look, you're going to be killed for doing wrong. And then for all these years, you are there stuck and you don't know where your death is coming. And every day you wake up perhaps thinking about it. Is this fair? You know, I have had the benefit of a personal interaction with some of the inmates mm. at the death row uh, 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 at Isawam. You know, as part of our faculty studies at the Law Faculty University of Ghana, mm. we had to do a tour mm. uh, to Isawam prison on two different occasions. And so on one of search, what we did was to um, go to the death row mm. where the inmates, that's there about 180 are. Now, mm. when uh, we approached them, in fact, it was quite horrifying mm -hmm. to see a fellow man with a death warrant on the person's, you know, every morning you wake up mm -hmm. and you know at the pleasure of the president, you can just die. Obviously, they are there because they have committed crimes, mm. crimes that have gone through the requirement of due process, mm. and they have been found guilty. Mm. In fact, I recall a personal encounter with two young people who obviously indicated to me mm. that it was a chieftaincy matter they got involved. At the end of the day, there was some shooting. Mm. Some people died in right. the process. Right. And so they went through the process of trial mm. and they were found guilty and sentenced to death. And the prison warden actually took us through how the whole mm. death mm. process okay. goes through. Mm. And it was horrifying. Horrifying. Look, one of these days, I'm, you are a very credible station. Mm. They will open up to you to interview some of them and you begin to appreciate beyond the condition under which because if you go through the death row uh, they are only 180 it's secluded okay if you look at it, it's a one right they are yeah. secluded. yeah they, in, fact, in fact someone is the only prison that has exactly that facility. and so they mm. are a bit secluded so right. you can see them you know isolated and so that place is not much crowded okay. like the normal, mm, the normal prison okay. area you know, and if you go there and you begin to interact with the people mm. beyond the regrets, some of them feel that, listen, this is not something. In fact, I met a young man who killed a white guy 
attempted burning him. Mm. In the process, the burn did not happen, right? And then eventually he was arrested at the filling station mm. and went through the due process. And he appealed, appealed to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court found out that there was no basis. Okay. He, in fact, committed a murder. And he's there. Look, the, the, the most painful aspect of all of this is if the warden take you through okay. the, the experience, mm. how at dawn you'll be picked up, taken to the gallow, okay. you stand on the platform, the, platform. Okay. the rope tied around your neck, mm. the plaque is taken off your feet, and then you hang on and then you you hang die. till you die. Wow. And so that experience, alone and so they have the muslim the christian you know the muslim coffin is okay. there all i mean it's quite you know a harrowing experience mm. and so for you to even live your life every day knowing that at the pleasure of the president mm. you can go at any time but it appears that post 1993 mm. all our presidents again is because of the work of amnesty international mm a certain international condemnation of, you know, death sentence. So why, why can't we abolish it then? Because, I mean, the global no. call is to get the death sentence abolished. You, you, no, you, you see, even the United States of America, a beacon of democracy and what have you, they still have the death sentence mm -hmm. in their books. Mighty China and okay. all those other countries, mm -hmm. they have it, you understand. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and some of the inmates, they have, you know, this whole belief that one day uh, a president, okay. by way of pardon, mm. or the exercise of the powers of uh, 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 pardon or mercy, mm. can commute the death sentence into life imprisonment. Mm. They prefer that option. And so all of these things, and, and you know, they are very hopeful mm. that one day they'll wake up and have some of these interventions that would ensure that maybe their death sentence is, you know, uh, uh, commuted okay. maybe to life imprisonment mm -hmm. and what have you. These are all options that are available right. to them. Mm -hmm. I strongly believe that we've gotten to a point in our country. And you see, the question of death sentence is also a deterrent factor. Okay. Because if somebody knows that if I should commit murder, mm -hmm. I'll be at home, right. They will do it. They will do it, right. And so you also want to send a strong message out there mm. that persons who engage in such acts, this is the consequence. And that consequence is that your life will also be taken from you. Okay. And that alone even restores public detests. confidence, exactly. even in law enforcement. Great. Well, we're still expecting the MPP representative. I must uh, keep emphasizing that so that... Uh, you don't see and say we're biased. Well, page 16 of the Daily Graphic, small arms commission to assign codes to firearms. It's, it's come up strongly, uh, especially in the face of the alleged coup or destabilization of the, uh, the presidency. Well, the National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons um, will, from Tuesday, October 1 this year, start assigning unique codes to all firearms in the country to enable easy identification, traceability, and accountability. This is a story by Salome Apiaj, by the way. And the exercise that national weapons marking is to ensure that all guns belonging to the security agencies as well as civilians are marked with unique codes and other features uh, with information on the owners captured into a database. The weapons coding exercise is in line with the Article Article 18 of the ECOWAS Convention of Small Arms and Light Weapons, which mandates countries uh, in the sub-region to mark their weapons to enable identification and traceability. Will this solve our problems, uh, Council, especially knowing that we've had this uh, Small Arms Commission at base, we gave an amnesty to people to bring their small arms, <coughs> sorry, so we could destroy and, and not have the pockets of violence that we have in, in, that, in our country uh, at know, some you, you, places. But I mean, some, it's still persisting. Yes. If we mark the guns, will it stop anything? I, I think it's all the question of um, trying to relate. Remember that if you discharge a bullet, mm. forensics can link that bullet from the gun okay. that particular bullet was discharged from. Right. And so... In fact, the bullets are coded. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. So once you discharge it from a particular gun, mm. the casing 
there are marks right. on it. Right. So a forensic expert can easily link mm. the gun from which that particular bullet. But because in most instances, we do not have the onus of some of these guns, mm. you know, completely related. Okay. So once the gun is even used, say, mm. robbery or okay. anything, mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult to trace whose okay. gun was used in the process. Mm -hmm. You've also seen instances where we have heard okay. that maybe a police or a security officer mm -hmm. within the regular arms or, you know, um, um, security agencies mm -hmm. has sold weapon mm -hmm. to say an armed robber right. or something. Right. In those circumstances, it becomes difficult to even link mm -hmm. a face mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. that particular True. gun. And so I believe that this regime mm -hmm. where you know that, look, my face, my identity, Everything is mm. associated with this particular gun. Okay. If the gun is used, mm. it can always be traced to you. Right. And it makes it even easier for law enforcement officers in their work, mm. even in prosecuting crime. Mm. In the most advanced country, which is a debate, for instance, in the U.S., mm. once you go into ownership of gun, mm the amount of information you can give when you want to own a gun. That, that, that process, we have that process here. Until no, the you, interior minister signs it off, you can't own a gun. No, you can't. But I'm saying that the, the, the amount of information, mm. the kind of tests that you need to do. I mean, if someone comes to you that I need to own a gun, I'm sure one of the requirements is that you want to even find out whether he's mentally, mentally stable. Sound, right. We have had instances where in the US, some of these mass murders, Later, you turn out that the person who had gotten the, uh, the opportunity of owning so much gun, mm -hmm. it has turned out that, look, he is not good upstairs. But, but we, we so are not, how we, did you give that as, person As a country, a we are not even good at checking who has a sound mind. Because no, that is, one of no. the requirements to become a parliamentarian in this country <laughs> is that the, you if, must if, sound if, if, if mind. The president, who checks, know, who no, checks no, that? No. Do you know that mm -hmm. under Article 42, mm -hmm. even the requirement to even be a registered voter, right. You need to be a citizen, mm. you need to be 18 and above, right. and of sound mind. Yes, but I'm saying who checks that? <laughs> Nobody checks that. So it's, it's, Nobody it's, checks it's, that. it's a big defect. That to be a parliamentarian, <laughs> you need to have sound mind. And yes, nobody checks no, that. I am not, I'm not sure you are trying to suggest. No, no, I didn't, I'm not suggesting. No, no, you, you are, are the not, one. They are not, they are evidence of some parliamentarians no, no, who I have didn't demonstrated say that. I'm saying that, I'm saying mind. that. It cuts the checking sound mind cuts across, but nobody checks it. No, I can understand it. why yeah. you don't want a conversation no, but because of the privileges it. commission. Nobody checks it. I know. Nobody checks <laughs> but, it. But but that's on a lighter note. Right. But the the critical issue is the amount of information and how to link mm. guns to those who own it. There is also a bigger phenomenon here in this country, the question of locally manufactured guns. Right. Mm. If the gun is locally manufactured. Mm. How do you do this coding? Mm. It becomes difficult. How, do the, as, how you even assess some of these you know, guns, mm. particularly those that are man, uh, locally manufactured? Mm. How do you take inventory? But, but the point is that, them? look, we, we know where these guns are manufactured. I mean, if you go towards the Nkunya and Lavanyo area, we are told the uh, security I, the security I, themselves come to tell us that recall, we know where you know, these guys I are recall. um if you go there are, there are several places in this country i recall they know where the people are i recall growing up in pando mm. i mean it's a local thing right that if you want the most powerful guns okay. just go to alavanyo maybe mm. what government can do um is to have one of the one district one, one factory in alavanyo engaged in manufacturing of gun okay. then it becomes more regulated mm. so that there's inventory the guns that you produce mm. at the end of the day government can take a certain stock right. and know mm. that this is the number of guns that have been you know manufactured from this particular factory mm. that's all part of the accountability process right i think that we've gotten to a point where even as a people mm. conscious of our security thing we should all together help the security agencies in bringing some of these matters. What I find worrying mm -hmm. is this whole conversation about coup d'etat. 
who deter? Okay. Now. Well, but it's not. I mean, the, the rate that was sent to the court has been amended, right? No, 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 no. Government, I mean, yesterday, mm. the deputy... The charges that have been brought against the, the, the people, the Dr. Deputy, Dr. Palmer and uh, Mr. The Izzo. deputy, uh, was an information minister, mm. uh, Pius, Pius Enam mm. Hajide, had a press briefing and insists mm. that what happened was a coup d'etat. Well, even when they, they charge sheets that... No, they yeah. are saying that, <laughs> that they are now said. gathering evidence of the, you know, the coup. And I listened so to... So they're the, suggesting that the, the, the charges will be amended in court? Is that what they're saying? Yes, and I have listened to the Deputy Attorney General, my very learned senior, uh, uh, Honorable Joseph uh, Benka, Benka. Mm -hmm. makes the point on City Eyewitness News when he says that, look, the charges that were preferred were preliminary charges. Okay. What it is, I don't know. And that they were done in such a way to meet the 48 hour. Okay, okay. So you can't hold them beyond 48 and Exactly. So but they but what, is, what is the preliminary charge? I, I don't know. Charge. And you so, are a lawyer, tell me. I am saying that at the time the people were charged, mm. they were primary facts. Right. What it means is that at the time they were charged, the primary fact available to the police investigator, which would the be BNR, in their statement, which would be in their statement and other right. material that they had picked. Remember that this is the work of 15 years, uh, 15, 15 months. months. Right. It is not today. Mm. So what it means is that certain primary investigation or evidence had been gathered within these 15 uh, uh, months. So, so, explain, so to me, explain to me what the process is. Somebody is picked up. Mm. Uh, he, he's taken to the police station. Yes. He puts down a statement. Yes. That statement will inform what charges are brought against Absolutely. him. Not only the statement. Okay. Remember that once the statement is taken, the one investigating the matter would okay. also pick pieces of evidence right. elsewhere. Right. Mm. And so with the evidence he has, mm. the evidence of and the statement taken from the, the suspect, they will now inform you that, listen, from the facts these are the crimes or the offenses that mm -hmm. we believe mm -hmm. are made up. Mm -hmm. And then you proceed to invoke the criminal jurisdiction mm -hmm. of the court with a charge sheet. Mm -hmm. And so the charge sheet gives you the state of affairs. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, the facts... Remember that you cannot just go and say you are amending the facts. Uh, I mean the charges. Okay. You need to amend the facts mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes even take the entire charge sheet away okay. and then do i've had a conversation that oh the reason why they were not charged for treason is because the courts are on vacation that's not correct they are criminal court sitting right in fact for treason you need three high court judges okay as we speak there are over nine high court judges sitting as vacation judges okay so, 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 so the, the proper charge that should have been brought against them... If is, the primary fact, as okay. at the time the uh, information minister put that statement out there, okay. if the primary fact supported treason, mm. there are costs to try them for treason. Right. Okay. And so this whole business that because we have vacation judges, it cannot be true. You understand that oh, we are on vacation, so the judges are not there, blah, blah. It cannot be true. They are vacation judges. So they could have gotten yes, judges three to, to sit on high court judges. In fact, those that are sitting, there are more than three. Okay, so I am saying that even the management of information by this government mm -hmm. has been one way PR. Look, if anybody attempts to destabilize this country, the effect is not about this government alone. It's about the collective security of the, all of us. And so it's not a matter we should joke with. Mm. But when you begin to interrogate mm -hmm. statement put out by government, the statement is here, the charge sheet is pointing in a different direction. It becomes problematic. Okay. Bella is back. Bella, welcome. Yes, I'm back. What, are you, what are you reading on WhatsApp? Well, people sort of agree with our lawyer and don't agree with him. And so okay. we're trying to uh, find just the middle ground opinions. There. Exactly. <laughs> so good morning, TV3. I don't take lessons uh, about this banking sector cleanup from politicians. I listen to financial and banking experts. So far, uh, well, so far to my knowledge and what I've heard from experts, that was a good move by Bank of Ghana. Uh, some describe it as a surgery without anesthesia, painful but necessary. Shaibu H. Mohammed from Savilugu. I see. Walanyu Anakotia says, why? Um, is NDC bent on uh, bent and totally overburdened as if they are sponsoring 
al the alleged coup plotters. Uh, they don't mm. mind if the country is set ablaze. People staging a coup, well, allegedly, uh, planning to, and some people are politicizing it. When you hear coup, it means you can easily be killed irrespective of your party colors. You should thank God that these evil men <laughs> were caught and stopped defending evil. Okay. Good morning, TV3. The issue about the collapsed bank is, is that when government gives contracts to contractors, they go to the banks for loans. And when they are not paid by the government, uh, where will they get the money to pay back the loans? So the problem is from the government. Pay your contractors so they can pay back their debts. That's Mohammed from Tamale. Good morning, Johnny and TV3. Uh, please carry this information out for us. NACO is not paying some of us. Uh, we've not been paid for four or five months now. Mm. Lekma, Ladma, and others. This is from Douglas Adams from Nungwa. Sami Bwachi Asamankasi says, Good morning, uh, boss. I think it's becoming unbecoming on how NDC propagandists digest on issues. Well, digest issues. Okay. Please ask him, per his analogy and mischievous ways of politicizing every issue, what has been their solution as a political party um, and the reason why they are desperate for power to solve the collapsing banking sector? Hashtag for more for Nana. Regards to Honorable Sintima Bwaji of Asamankes. Good morning, Johnny, and to my able lawyer, Nanado, our, fin uh, uh, Nanado, our finance minister, and, and, our, finance. and our finance minister um, are wicked. They are closing the banks in order to boost their own from Body Agenda 2020. Some Zugu SR. Okay. Um, John Nilante van der Poy from Tema Community to BBC. Oh, there's a place like that? <laughs> okay. I'm not impressed at all by how government has handled the banking sector crisis. They spent a whooping amount of money to conduct the cleanup, forgetting that uh, it can be used to support the supposed financially weak banks so that they can get back on their feet. This is preposterous and bright. Why wouldn't interest rates come down when businessmen, uh, when the capital of businessmen are locked up uh, and the collapsed banks and they cannot do any, any import? It is a deliberate attempt by government to bring interest rates down. Okay. okay. Thank you very, very much. And uh, well, in, in, wrapping, in wrapping up, yes, yes you there's a, a very critical issue that was raised by one of your texts. Is that what would have been the NDC solution? Right. Give a classic example. By the time the NDC came to power in the year 2009, mm. Ghana Commercial Bank was at the verge of collapse. You know the source. Mm. Tall debts. Ghana Commercial Bank was overly exposed by reason of tall debts. Mm. The NDC administration would have packaged Ghana Commercial Bank and sold it cheaply to friends and families. What did the NDC do? Mm. We put out the tall debt recovery levy. You recall, mm. by reason of that tall debt recovery levy alone, it provided a certain cash flow, mm. which now started resolving the overexposure of tall to Bank of Ga uh, Ghana Commercial Bank. Today, Commercial Bank is on its feet by reason of that intervention. The, the, these, no, these, these, these collapse started no, in, in 2016. So I am giving you the classic example. What you do is that when you see, remember that the Bank of Ghana is the lender of last resort. Right. So some of these banks, once you see they are struggling, you actually even give them what you call a bailout. They've been giving a bailout. Some were giving bailouts no, and they no, used no, it for no, other purposes. No, no, no. It is not proven. I am saying so that it's not proven. Is, is and so also, fair. listen, in one of the banks, they had paid even the bailout, the interest alone, over 200 and something 620 million. 620 million. And they, had pay, no. they gave it to some banks no, hold on. to use. And remember to, that. To redeem themselves. No, remember and they that, used that, it to no, set up remember a new bank. Remember that. That's 600 and something million. Right. They were paying the interest at 25 percent. Okay. They were paying interest. It was income to the Bank of Ghana. Okay. Do you know mm. NIB ADB when the NDC took over in 2009? By reason the, of the, the risk, collapse of the bank started the in 2016. That's what, the what did you do about it? That's what I'm giving you. That is why I'm giving you. Mm. There is a way you can do it without killing them. Okay, so uh, yesterday, as a, just a point of interest, really, I saw a video of uh, Ibad Ibrahim, uh, some call him a security expert, standing in front of the hospital at Alaji, where Dr. McPalm were taken. And he had recorded a video with, there with the lectern and all of that pointing to it. That's supposed to be a crime scene, right? My thinking was that by now, 
that crime scene should be cordoned, so at least to permit for further investigation, especially so when the police themselves and then the security agencies have indicated that some of the weapons were found at that particular scene. Okay. How he got access to the police. But you see, it gives you an understanding of how untidy we have managed it. And so when you have no leadership response, my friend Ibad will provide that leadership lacuna. Mm -hmm. Why? Maybe if a serious issue of coup, we okay. should have the president or the vice speaking to the good people. Thank you. And so while they cannot Thank you. do, Ibad will address grateful us. For your time. Lord, and so Ibad Ibad address speaks us. on behalf of the... Of the NDC. He's not the acting president, I beg you. Thank you. Ibad Ibrahim uh, is working on, at this corner. I, I didn't like the fact that he went to a crime scene to have a leg turn and was pointing out to this, uh, you know, anyway. Well.